What's up, brothers and sisters? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're at, whenever you're watching this video. Grab your smoothie and let's get into the word. Mm. Praise God for delicious fruits and vegetables and all sorts of wonderful things that he has created. And dark chocolate. Oh, dark chocolate. So tasty. Um, have you guys ever had raw cacao beans? Um, just the bean itself. Uh, I believe... Was it raw or was it roasted first? I can't remember. It might have just been raw, unless that'll kill you. I can't remember. Because <laughs> I know, like, it's dangerous to eat, like, black bean and pinto beans. They have to be cooked first. It's dangerous to eat them raw. That's not what this video is about. Anyways, I had, like, the cacao bean before it was processed or anything like that. And it was pretty tasty. It was bitter and strong. Um, uh, excuse me, but it was really tasty. I had lots of, lots of cacao on that trip it was a trip i took um years ago i think like four or five years ago maybe less i don't know i think four or five years ago to uh, indonesia anyways now what this video is about praise god brothers and sisters philippians I, I, the lord just has me talking on this stuff and i'm gonna keep saying it as long as the lord leads i just want to i just want to say what he wants me to say i don't know who i'm speaking to but i know what i'm speaking about and I know the dangers of it because I fall into it. And also, I, ha I get questions and comments from people who are entertaining or emails from people who are entertaining this stuff. I have uh, stories of other brothers and sisters as well that have entertained channels, entertained false doctrine, entertained bad theology or unsound doctrine based off of, well, I want to walk in love. No, that's not walking in love. Well, I want to be the one to reach out to them. No. Well, I want to see what they're saying and if there's any drama or gossip. No. Well, I want to see what, where they're coming from. No. That's all flesh. That's, that's all flesh. Why? Because time and time again in the word, we are admonished and warned to mark and avoid people who preach contrary to the cross of Christ. <laughs> Plain and simple. And brothers and sisters, praise God that we can rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom now we have received the atonement. Anyone who's watching this video, listen, listen right now. This is the gospel of our salvation. It is the power of God unto salvation that worked on our behalf to reconcile us unto himself, to bring us into himself, to give us life and love and joy and peace and all the riches of his grace. Oh, there's so much more. But this is the gospel that we believe and by which we are saved. That Jesus Christ died for all of our sins. Every single one of them, past, present, and future. He died for all of our sins, all sin for all time. Was buried and on the third day rose from the dead for our justification. The moment you believe that, you are a child of God forever. Don't let anyone else try and tell you otherwise because it's against the word of God. What is true is that you are a child of God forever. You have been sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. You have passed from death to life. Praise God. You are no longer condemned. You are, the wrath of God is, is not for you. You have been saved by your faith in the blood of Jesus Christ that he shed for us that he died for our sins, was buried, and rose again. You are saved and sealed, a child of God forever. You will never be plucked from the Father's hand. You will never be separated from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's John 10, 27 through 30. That's John 6, 29, John 6, 40, John 6, 47, John 3, 16, John 3, I think it's 33, or John 3, 36, whatever the last verse of chapter 3 of John is. Ephesians 1, 7, Ephesians 1, 13 and 14, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. Praise God. A Romans 4, 5, Romans uh, chapter 3, 20 through 28. Again, talking about how we are saved by faith alone in Jesus Christ. Praise God. And so many other, so many other places in, in the word. Jesus Christ died for our sins, was buried, and rose again. Everyone who believes that is a child of God forever. Passed from death to life. Colossians 1.13, one that I've been meditating on this week. We have been delivered. You, you are, and Romans 5.1. Oh, there's so many. You are justified by faith, and you have peace with God. 
Colossians 1.13 now. We have been delivered from the power of darkness and translated or transferred into the kingdom of his dear son. That is a translation, a transference that is that God does. We don't have the power to overrule that. We have been baptized the moment you believed. This is this is why the promises of God are so good and they're perfect and they are they're perfect. We believe the gospel. That's it. God and even God helps with that part. Praise the Lord because God revealed himself to me. Once he revealed himself to me and I and I was like, "Oh my gosh, D, Jesus really died for me. I believe, I believe, I believe." Praise the Lord. He revealed that truth. God handles everything. Praise the Lord. God handles everything. And you can rest. You can rest, brothers and sisters. That's not what this video is about. This is a six-minute intro. I pray that you're sticking with me because now I'm going to have a bit of a harsh word, I think, or a stern word. Again, still talking about what um, I talked about in the last couple of videos and what I've talked about many times before and so many brothers and sisters have. Philippians chapter 3, verse 1, will start there. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord, hallelujah, to write the same things to you, to me, indeed, is not grievous, but for you, it is safe. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision. For we are the circumcision, which worship God in the spirit, and rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in in the flesh. And then he goes to talk about if anyone wants to boast in themselves, check this out. And then Paul shows that anyone's boasting, Paul exceeded far above anyone's boasting. And Paul, in all of his boasting that he could do in himself through the law, he counted it all as loss to gain the knowledge of Jesus Christ, to grow in the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ. But what things were gained to me, those I counted for loss. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them dung, that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Now that's only one part of what I want to talk about. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the concision. Brothers and sisters, do not, do not keep going to channels. Do not keep listening to people who have unsound doctrine that are, that are preaching contrary to the cross, preaching contrary to the gospel of Jesus Christ. They're bringing something else, a doctrine of demons. They're bringing heresy. They're bringing just garbage. They're bringing spiritual junk food. They're trying to feed your flesh so that you continue to listen to them because they want to lead you astray. That is being carried off as spoil. That is someone stealing your crown. Is someone pulling you back into the beggarly elements, back into bondage, back into fear, back into the law. That's what that is. Be very careful of that. And if people say, yeah, because I use, I use a firm tone because this is important. And also, I'm just talking, man. This is how I talk. I talk firm. <laughs> Anyways, but if someone wants to say that we're not walking in love because we're not tolerating unsound doctrine, I just, I, uh, I'm not going to listen to someone who preaches something other than the true gospel of grace that Jesus Christ died for our sins, was buried, and rose again. And they'll use any language to hopscotch, jump through hoops around, and uh, throw some balloons and, and firecrackers in the air to get you to look at what they're saying and ignore where they're actually coming from and what they actually believe. Because I've, as I talked about in my other video, they'll use different definitions of repentance, of faith, They'll use a different definition for, or a different understanding of sanctification, which is still by grace, or of uh, reward, or inheritance, or fellowship. They'll use anything they can to draw you away from the gospel so that they can bring in works and legalism. Beware of the dogs, beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision. 
If someone is trying to convince you that there is a different different definition of faith and that different definition of faith points you to law keeping or obedience to commandments, that person who is preaching that needs to be marked and avoided. It does not matter if they are a confused brother. You can give them the gospel if they don't want to hear it. As I keep saying, and y'all know, peace out. Wipe the dust from off your shoes and continue to move on, rooted and grounded and not moved away from truth, from the gospel, which is by grace. Everything is by grace. If anything is by works, it's no more of grace. It's by works. And if something be by works, then it's no more of grace because works is not grace. So, If someone tries to tell you there's a different definition of faith to backdoor works and point you to the law and obedience, check their gospel. Do they believe in the finished redemptive work of Jesus Christ on the cross? If they say yes, but only for those who really repent, well, then that's a red flag to me that they don't understand what biblical repentance is. I had this conversation with someone yesterday. They asked me is if someone who saved because they denied once saved, always saved, which is just something that people use so they can glory in themselves and put their salvation and their ability to obtain salvation that they have a higher calling because they can really obtain salvation because they've truly repented because they don't understand biblical repentance, which is metanoia to change your mind to go from unbelief to belief, which is to believe the gospel, praise God. They turn repentance into a work to stay saved, which makes them a co-savior or their own savior to begin with, because then they have to maintain and earn their own salvation through their dead flesh repentance because they're not doing it in faith. They're not believing in the blood of Jesus Christ. So he said, if someone who's saved rapes someone, are they really going to heaven? You really believe that? And I answered, did Jesus Christ pay the debt for all sin? And they liked, and they liked that. So maybe this person is just really deceived, right? But that's not for me to, that's not for me to argue out with him. I'm going to give the gospel and peace out because he didn't want to hear it. So he liked the comments. He, he said only for those who really repent. Now, what does that look like? That that's where I said that that person has a different definition of repentance so that they can earn a self-righteousness and put them above someone else and put themselves on a pedestal because it's their flesh and their covetousness and the pride and whatever getting in the way of seeing that their flesh, their good flesh, even that religious flesh, whatever it is, all flesh, the totality of flesh is crucified and condemned, but they don't want to see that. They want to think that their flesh is better than someone else's and they can really earn salvation because they've truly repented, but they actually haven't truly repented because they're not doing biblical repentance, which is just to believe the gospel. So I say these things again to warn people, brothers, sisters, we approve that which is excellent. That's part of our discernment, right? Approving that which is excellent. If someone cannot approve that which is excellent, which is the testimony of God concerning his son, and they use any method they can, different definition of faith, repentance, uh, understanding of sanctification, rewards, anything to say, no, but there is some law involved. There is some of your own effort involved. There is some of your flesh that needs to come out of the tomb and get cleaned up because they want their own self-righteousness through the law. They want to glory in their shame. If anyone uses that to point you back to the law, avoid, mark and avoid, give them the gospel, peace out. People are changing the definition of words. And I, I think, I'm not totally sure. There might be something happening where there is a different definition of the church going around. Don't quote me on that. Don't go looking for it. I just want to be very clear that the church is the body of Christ, which is every born again believer. And you are born again and you are a believer. You are a brother and a sister, a child of God forever. The moment that you believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried and rose again for your justification, praise God. And that is the Jesus of the Bible, the son of God. Praise the Lord. Don't let people try and draw you in with their worldly wisdom of changing definitions, manipulation, and gu- and being guileless, and playing on emotion, saying, well, people aren't walking in love because 
like blah, 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 blah. Or, well, they're not, we're supposed to walk in love. So we're supposed to tolerate this stuff. And it's okay because we can still like, we can still pray for them. We can still hope that they'll hear the gospel and things like that. There's a difference between someone who doesn't believe and an enemy of the cross. Someone who doesn't believe is very forward with it. And they're just like, yeah, I don't believe that. Okay. I, I, I still want to pray for that salvation. That's like my, my family. Um, the majority of my family or actually half of my family does not believe. I pray that they believe, praise God. They're not enemies of the cross coming in and preaching something different, preaching a different Jesus, preaching a different way of salvation or uh, being an enemy of the cross in terms of um, try, being a false brother coming in unaware or whatever, preaching a different gospel. No, they're just, they just don't believe. All right? We are warned to beware of these people who are evil workers. The concision of dogs that will do anything they can to lead you away from Christ. We do not tolerate that. We do not entertain it. I'm also preaching to myself because I'm encountering a lot, and this is something that I've stumbled stumbled at before, um, is feeling like, well, I, I get caught up in um, not debating, but basically giving scripture, giving scripture, and basically just like going, going, going with a conversation when clearly they're just not going to hear it. And I'm not going to be the one who's going to open their eyes, right? The seed has been planted. The word will not return void. God will do what he needs to do. If they're his, he will bring them back. And if they're just an evil worker, if they are just, if they are on a campaign against the truth, if they are on a campaign against the gospel, that's a pretty good indicator that they're not necessarily deceived, but they are an enemy of the cross, <laughs> Uh, because someone who's just deceived and is struggling with condemnation or struggling with their assurance of salvation or someone who's struggling with um, that they don't need to go back to the law, they're Galatianized. I've been there. A lot of us have been there. Um, we still can't really fellowship with the, that person, but we can give them the truth and then let the Lord handle them, right? Um, because you can't really fellowship with people who are just preaching the law. If there's no Christ, there's not fellowship, right? But anyways... If they're on a campaign, if they're trying to change definition of words just to change the gospel, which they can't change the gospel, the gospel is the gospel. They're just trying to pervert it to confuse people. I'll leave them alone, mark and avoid. Don't even go listen to their post channels, whatever, whatever they're recommending. Honestly, just completely avoid it. Don't fall into the deception of all oh, of the flesh being like, well, I kind of want to know. I kind of want to be on the inside of the garbage. Well, no, you don't. You don't want to be on the inside of the garbage can because you can't come up smelling stinky. And your your conscience is going to get damaged and it's going to take some, it's going to take <laughs> the Lord to bring you back and clean you up, which he will, praise the Lord, because he's awesome. But don't go in there and entertain trash because it's going to damage, right? And we, I, I say this out of love. I don't care if someone says I'm not being loving because, man, I don't even, I I really do not listen to what people say. I've got enough problems of my own and needing to rest in the Lord and, and remember the promises of God and all these things and preaching to myself like, we all have our own struggles entering the rest or just trusting God, right? Um, in terms of like, you know, things are difficult or uh, we have struggles in our life or circum circumstances or our emotions flare up or the flesh gets in our face. That's what I'm talking about, right? Um, I don't have time for drama. I dealt with that already. So many of us have already dealt with that. I don't got time for that. I've got me and my family and Jesus. I mean, I've got Jesus. That's all I need. But I want everything to be, I want peace in my family. And I'm not going to go and try and entertain these channels and have the possibility of my damage being, con my conscience being damaged by that. Do you understand what I'm saying? Y'all understand what I'm saying. I'm just, I'm just talking in circles. Um, but if someone's trying to change the definition of the, of the word church, because people weren't being loving enough or people weren't being spiritual enough, avoid that. Because what does that do? If, oh, they're not being loving enough. Okay. Well, I need to be more loving burden, demand law. Well, they weren't being spiritual enough, burden, demand law, and a confused understanding of what being spiritual means does not mean being on an emotional high all the time. That's that's not what that means. It does not mean hearing the Lord speak all the time. Be very careful of that. If it doesn't line up with the word, 
Ignore it. All right. Maybe, I don't know if I'm going to upload this video. We'll see. Um, but I pray it was a blessing. I'm, I, honestly, I feel like it's just a, another, I, like, I literally talked about this yesterday, didn't I? Or the day before. But whatever. Brothers and sisters, be careful. Do not let people change the definition of words to bring you back into bondage. Do not let people change the definition of words to insert law and pervert the gospel. Plain and simple. We stand on the gospel of grace. We point to Jesus Christ and let him handle everything. Praise God. We can trust him. Uh, Jesus Christ died for our sins, was buried, and rose again. He has saved us to the uttermost. Praise God. All right. Uh, see you guys later.